Well, greetings everyone and welcome back here to part two of my complete Atlas Seaboard comics collection. Now the, there are the magazines, which I no longer have. I did used to have them. So I guess you can say that I've had the complete collection over time, but um, this is part two of the comics part. And if you have not uh, seen part one, um, I suggest that you go ahead and go back last, at uh, two weeks from today, and see that video because that kind of explains a little bit about what um, I'm doing here, how I got it, and so on and so forth. Although you will hear a little bit about that today. I'm actually filming this a few days after that first one because, I'm sorry, I'm maneuvering the camera here. It's, it's on a little stand that I'm trying to figure out how to get it centered. Uh, it's kind of wobbled on me. Um, so as I was saying, uh, the part one uh, was a couple weeks ago uh, when I stopped on uh, police action. And here I am going to part two. And I am doing this just a few days afterwards because I will not be in town when I'm going to be uploading this uh, video and I don't want to have to take the comics with me and so forth. So I figured I'd just do it now and um, upload it uh, on this uh, Thursday. It would be the 25th or so. So anyway, uh, so let's continue on with the Atlas Seaboard set. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my thoughts here. Uh, again, you know, as, as I mentioned before, this was a set that lasted just less than six months, I want to say. Um, and I recall certain um, stories about it that uh, Goodman uh, had gotten a lot of these creators uh, actually away from Marvel, like physically, because their offices were right around the block for, from Marvel's offices. So they would essentially call them up and say, hey, you know, could you come around the block when you when you have time? And they would pitch them uh, the, the job, right, for either stories or art. And so they got a lot of Marvel creators that way. And um, and that was yeah, maybe a, a little bit underhanded, you know, try, essentially just physically bringing them over since it was nearby. Um, but uh, it certainly worked because they got some top shelf cat talent. I think I mentioned some last week. Uh, Archie Goodwin was one of the writers. Uh, Frederick, uh, the Ghost Rider creator. Uh, Steve Skeets. Um, Larry Lieber, of course, and his brother did the editing uh, for the first uh, couple months on the. Um, I think on the uh, on the magazines, and then when Jeff Roven left, he did it on all the comics as well. Uh, Sergeant Striker's Death Squad is actually Savage Combat Tales. And uh, yeah, it's again, you know, a lot of these Atlas Seaboard comics had striking similarities to Marvel comics. And here, I guess you can make the case that this was some kind of analogy to Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, except these guys were a lot rougher you know it's a world war ii setting but these guys i mean they were called the death squad these guys were killers i mean like this i mean some of these guys were like uh you know criminals in the back you know in the, in the past or whatever and maybe reformed i'm not really sure but they were yeah they there was a lot of a lot of killing here obviously it's war but the way it was portrayed was somewhat gratuitous i'd say um, again, and not, not my favorite art in, in, or stories in that particular series. A very good series, however, was, at least initially, The Scorpion, uh, which, of course, was created, well, not of course, but, you know, it was created by Howard Chaikin, and he did the art as well, and uh, obviously this character was later moved over to... Um, Marvel as Dominic Fortune, as you can see here, right? Um, but this is where he got his start. Uh, again, he was a mercenary for hire, swashbuckling adventure, uh, really cool, um, uh, really concept here, I thought. Um, and, but again, the what happened uh, here is that 
And the story goes, right, that Goodman wanted his comics to be more Marvel-like, more superhero-ish. So they con a lot of the third issues, they converted the characters that were somewhat convertible and some really not into Marvel-like superheroes. And here, Chaikin left. I think he just, like, he's like he was probably said no or he just... Or they maybe just said, you know, we're going to go in a different direction. And um, they created this character, the Scorpion, in issue number three, which bears really no resemblance in any way, shape, or fashion to the Scorpion in the first two issues. And, and this happened a lot. I think Jim Craig took over the art chores. It was very, you know, Marvel-like action superheroes swinging and gadgets. Very different from Scorpion that Jake and created. And here's Tales of Evil, kind of an anthology series, but it did have some recurring characters. I think the Bog Beast and had, you know, like werewolf and Dracula, you know, vampires. So I think probably this was some analogous to Werewolf by Night, um, maybe Man Thing, and of course Dracula, right? Uh, again, that's they're they're not it's not so overtly. Uh, taken from those characters, but certainly, you know, you can't deny that there are some similarities there. I, you know, you, you, could, you could make the argument that that's the case anyway, right? And here, uh, this man monster can sort of make the case that perhaps they were trying to um, mimic, like, the thing, you know, uh, from the Fantastic Four, perhaps, Maybe not. It's 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 you know sometimes you just you you just get suspicious when so many of these uh, characters uh, remind you of the Marvel versions. Um, but again, that that was an okay series. Some of the art was really not good there. Uh, here is a very interesting series. Talk about a transformation. Here is Target. Uh, this gentleman was a, an FBI agent whose family was killed when the plane blew up because apparently the mafia was trying to hit somebody on there. And so he just goes, you know, berserko um, and just uh, on a vendetta to find, you know, and, and eliminate anybody who was in any way involved with that. And does rough, rough stuff here is a, a, a scene where he essentially shoots this guy's face off. And then halfway through this issue, he wears a, you know, superhero costume kind of inexplicably. I mean, I wasn't sure that I, I don't remember the rationale. It didn't seem to me like to click at all. Um, and then the transformation was completed in number three here where he went all out superhero in a sense because he gained superpowers, strength and invulnerability. How he got it, I'm not. I don't. I don't even think he really knew. And then he's fighting kind of a villainous guy here. The others were more like uh, organized crime and things like that. So again, the Goodman, I think, just came out and said, "Hey, I want every everybody that you can to make to be a super as superheroish as possible because I want them to be like Marvel stuff." You know, I, I think at this point he was he knew he was losing money. Uh, Goodman did, and um, he was getting a little bit desperate. So uh, I don't know if he knew about the sales or if it was just becoming obvious that you know that just wasn't uh, the um, there there wasn't the publicity behind uh, Atlas that there was behind Marvel, uh, Charles and RDC, and he just said, hey, you know, we got to make that change. And even though a lot of them didn't agree with it. In fact, I think Jeff Rovin left over it. Um, it they, you know, most of them did. Here is a, this one kind of continued a, a sort of superheroish, more like an adventurer, really, Tiger Man. I really did not like this series at all. I, I guess you can, <clears throat> you can say this was analogous to perhaps Black Panther, I suppose, in some tangential way. Um, but uh, I just really, I thought the, the stories and the art were just, so stereotypical and so corny. Uh, I just did not like this Tiger Man series at all. And then comes to another one of those really edgy series that I was telling you about in the first part where a lot of these just were just a little harder edge than the Marvel ones. And here we have weird suspense starring the tarantula, kind of a supernatural, you know, monster kind of, uh, 
series. I I don't think that this is really analogous to Spider-Man, even though they're both arachnids, I guess, but very different. And uh, rough, rough stuff here. In fact, the tarantula, actually, after he defeats his foes, he eats them, like devours them, uh, or at least parts of them. <laughs> so it's just... It's just really just unusual stuff that really, I think, pushed the uh, boundaries of the comics code at the time. I, you know, especially when monsters were, you know, really, it, it were relaxed, but man, they really just, uh, they just took them to a whole nother level here as far as the edginess of those, um, uh, the character traits. Here's uh, Kid Cody and G Comanche Kid, uh, probably analogous to like Rawhide Kid, um, uh, Kid Cody is. And um, the Comanche Kid is actually a um, an Anglo who was raised as an Indian. Um, so, ooh, that's, well, glare is pretty bad there. Uh, not, not too bad of a little um, Western here. I think this was written, I'm not sure who, uh, Doug Wild, he think did the art. Uh, on that series. I thought it was okay. One issue only. And here's Wolf, uh, the Barbarian. Yes, I mean, this would, I would say, definitely be analogous to Conan. Um, again, sword and sorcery and mystical monsters and women in distress and the whole bit here. Uh, I enjoyed the series, though. Um, I really, uh, the cover to number four is really one of my favorites, as you'll see in a minute. But uh, the stories were, you know, pretty reasonable. Um, now here, this cover here, I just really, I really like that color uh, scheme and layout here uh, of this uh, particular cover. Um, but again, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, nothing, again, super groundbreaking or anything like that, but certainly um, uh, something that, you know, it's, it's worth a read for sure. And then finally, the last uh, and, uh, series that uh, completed the set is Vicky. Which is which were really reprints from Tower Comics, Tippy Teen and Teen In and those titles. The, they had a, a sort of a separate imprint in Tower for like Archie like teenage uh, oriented comics, and uh, Vicky uh, was actually just a reprints of those. And interesting here is that the first two are fifty cents because they are obviously like double size and they're also square bound. I don't know if that will come out in the camera. And then the last two, which were sent to me by Comic Mag Musings are regular size, uh, three and four. And these are even the toughest ones to find that uh, uh, for sure. And I am just so, so happy. And I uh, can't thank Bill enough for sending those to me. And that is the complete comic set for my Atlas Seaboard, mine and everybody else's. If you wanna see like a totally complete set, including the magazines, After Comics has a video with all of those. I'm gonna see if I can find it and put a link below. Uh, Alan Garrett um, also uh, has complete sets of most everything. So you can always check him out in case you want to see most any other set. Uh, it's just that amazing. All right, thanks, thanks to everybody. Thanks for all of you who commented, Ranger Sly and Gray Man, I know you guys are big Atlas Seaboard fans and Cream City comics. Um, I really do appreciate um, all the uh, the kind words and inspiration that and motivation that uh, you guys give me to complete uh, this set and other sets and to continue sharing videos with the community. I really do appreciate it because I just really enjoy the interaction. So continue doing that, please. And again, if you have any suggestions, uh, I have seen a few suggestions, I think from Paolo and so forth, which I'm going to be taking to heart. And I'm going to be probably doing my next, in two weeks, I'm probably going to be showing some Marvel cards, since I've seen that a lot of people are now saying they're hot or whatever. Uh, that doesn't matter to me, but I just, I wanted to do that anyway, because uh, I saw Bad Dad's video and I was like, man, I want to dig mine out and show them to the community so you can see what the promo sets and the holograms and all that look like, because they're just neat collectibles. <laughs> so I'll probably be doing that in a couple weeks. Everybody. 15 minutes almost. I've been babbling as usual. So I hope to see everybody on, in uh, the roundup next Thursday. 
And again, in two weeks, I will have one of these videos. Everybody be blessed and be back.